The purpose of this lesson is to show what the derivative of an exponential shape curve is, and then also we'll introduce uh, a number e uh, through a PowerPoint uh, a little later on. So first of all, what's graphed here is y equals 2 to the x, or uh, f of x equals 2 to the x. This is the 2 to the x function. And I've plotted two points on the curve here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a line between them. And right now we have a secant line. Uh, it connects these two different points that are quite a ways apart. And if we move the points close together, I'm going to move p really, really close to q, the closer it gets, the more that secant line looks like a tangent line. And those two points are so close together right now that uh, that line is really the same as, or essentially the same as the tangent line at P. And I could drag it even closer if I wanted to. Like, they're, they're almost on top of one another. So what we have here right now is a secant line, but it's, it's almost exactly like a tangent line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the x-coordinate, it's called the abscissa of point P. The x-coordinate there is 2.7. And I'm going to also measure the slope of the tangent line. Now, because these points are so close together, and essentially the secant is behaving like a tangent right now, the uh, rate of change at point P, at, two point, at an x-coordinate of 2.7, is 4.5. Um, in terms of calculus, the um, value of the derivative at that point p, where x, the x coordinate is 2.7, the value of the derivative would be 4.5. So we could say f prime of 2.7 is 4.5, accurate to a, a decimal place or so. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to plot um, a new point. Now that point, I clicked on x, the x coordinate, and then I clicked on the slope. So this point C here, its x-coordinate is the same as P, and its y-coordinate, the y-coordinate of that is actually the slope of the tangent line here. So essentially that point P represents the derivative of the curve at that point P because the slope of the secant line here that looks like a tangent is the y-coordinate of this point. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to trace that point and if I click on these two points and drag them along the curve here notice that point C is tracing along and everywhere I trace the y coordinate of that point is the slope of this tangent line the secant looks just like a tangent line and so if I trace along here up to a point where x is about 3.8 there. The slope of the tangent line is about 9.8. So again, the slope of the tangent line um, is the rate of change at that point. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm tracing along and creating the derivative of this y equals 2 to the x curve. And notice that this new curve that I'm tracing still has an exponential shape. And what that means, so this actually, that traced curve there is the derivative of y equals 2 to the x. And notice it has the same exponential shape. So what that means is that the derivative of an exponential curve is also an exponential curve. The exponential curve doesn't behave like those polynomial functions where the derivative of a quartic is a cubic or the derivative of a cubic is a quadratic. And uh, every time you differentiate, it goes down one power. The deriv derivative of a quadratic is a linear function. Now, uh, just to show you uh, a second one here, I've also graphed uh, y equals 5 to the power of x. And I'm just going to do the same thing one more time. And so we're going to construct the line between them. And actually, let's put those two points really close together. So we'll measure the uh, x coordinate of that point, And then we'll measure the slope of the uh, tangent line or secant line. And we're going to plot that point. So notice the point's up here now. And we will trace the plotted point. OK, so once again, that point, the y coordinate, is the slope of the tangent line. So as we trace along here, notice that the, uh, the tracing line is above the curve, but it still has an exponential shape. So that still means it doesn't have to be below the curve. 
that still means that the derivative of an exponential function is still an exponential function. And in fact, let's bring this down here out of the way a little bit. The, the derivative is actually the original function multiplied by the ln of the base. The base here is 5. And if you haven't heard of the ln, ln function before, what the ln function is, is it's a logarithm base e. And in the PowerPoint, I'll, I'll demonstrate what the number e is. It's a specific number. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph. I'm going to plot a new function. And its ln is, is ln is the, is the way it's written. And so I'm going to take the ln of 5. And I'm going to multiply that by 5 to the power of x. So it's the original function multiplied by the ln of the base. And notice that that traces exactly along that traced function. So what that means is that the derivative of 5 to the x is the original 5 to the x multiplied by the ln of the 5. The 5 is the base. If we go back to the original 2 to the x function, and I graph new function, so I'm going to find, take the ln of 2 in this case, because the base is 2 there, times 2 to the power of x. Once again, that traces exactly along the function. Okay, just showing that the derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x times the ln of 2. Now, what's this ln number? It's, it's called the base of the natural logarithm. Uh, logarithms can have any base whatsoever, and when we write log, um, it, uh, we can put any base we want. Uh, but the ln has a, a specific base, and it's the number e. And what the number e is, is it's defined to be the limit as h tends towards 0 of the quantity 1 plus h to the power of 1 over h. And so if h is tending towards 0, that means that the uh, base here is tending towards 1. Because as h is closer to 0, the base would get closer to 1. And, but if uh, the uh, denominator in this uh, exponent is approaching 0, it means it's 1 divided by smaller and smaller numbers. So what happens is the exponent is approaching an infinite value. So the first one here, we're going to put 0 0.1, just to show if we're going to put some numbers in place of h and get closer and closer and closer to 0. So I'm going to put 0 0.1 in first. And what we're actually evaluating then here is this. We'd be evaluating with, if we put 0.1 in, it would be 1.1, when we add 1 and 0.1, to the power of 1 over 0.1, which is actually 1.1 to the power of 10, because this is 10. And if we evaluate that, this is what it looks like in the uh, my graphing calculator. That's the same thing as I have here. And we actually get a value of about 2.59, etc. Now we're going to put a number closer to 0 in, 0 0.01. So we would actually be evaluating 1.01 to the power of 1 over 0 0.01, which is actually 1.01 to the power of 100, because that's actually 100, not 10. Uh, 1 divided by 100 is 100. So what it looks like in my graphing calculator is this. And we get this for a value, 2.704, etc. If we put this number in, looks like this in my graphing calculator. It's actually 1.001 .001 to the power of 1,000. And it works out to 2.71. So notice now that since we're getting pretty close to 0, um, it's settled down so that it's about 2.7 something. And what's changed here is the 100th place. In fact, it's only changed from 0 to 1. This number here would actually be, I, I'm using scientific notation. I want a number really close to 0. It would be 0.000000. .000 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's what we're putting in place of h for this last one. It uh, looks like this in my graphing calculator. And this is what it works out to be. And that's actually fairly accurate. The actual number for e, and you'll find this in any, in any uh, graphing or scientific calculator, is 2.7182818. And actually notice that this is uh, accurate to that decimal place, the uh, ninth one, uh, 4, 5, 9, etc. So that's what the number e is. And it's the base of the natural logarithm. So when, you, when somebody says ln, it means a logarithm that base. And that's the end of the lesson.